Good evening everybody and welcome to the first of three presentations I'm going to be delivering over the next two weeks focused on building the natural capacity of your farm to trap and hold water. The objective of this first presentation is to provide you with an overview of the water cycle and an understanding of how agriculture is influenced by and influences the movement of water. The majority of the planet is covered in water and that water gets pulled up into the atmosphere by the process of evaporation and a fraction also through transpiration that blows through plants. In its gaseous phase in the atmosphere uh, when it cools it then falls back to the earth as precipitation and that might be in the form of rainfall might be in the form of snow, might be ice pellets, occasionally all three at the same time. That precipitation back on the Earth's surface uh, is then fractioned. So a portion of it flows over land, some of it hits back into surface water, some of it runs off and carries on to other areas of the planet. Uh, the fraction that gets pulled into the ground is what we refer to as infiltration and that creates a reservoir of groundwater. Now that groundwater itself is also in motion. Some of it moves deeper, some of it moves laterally by diffusion, and some of it will resurface. Uh, so this exfiltration process, it might be because of a change in topography where you would have water springing to the surface or occasionally uh, where you have a large body of water underground sitting on top of an impermeable surface the pressure from the weight of the water forces a column in the center back up to the surface and we call that an artesian spring. Now agriculture makes use of these inflows and surface water and groundwater in various ways so crops will access a certain portion of their water needs from groundwater in the surface layers of their rooting zone. And we can also supplement that with irrigation. Livestock will drink water and then excrete water. And then we have a variety of other uh, uses of water on farm, uh, for example, wash water or evaporative curlers, which will draw water and release water back into the cycle. In all cases, it's important to note that for the most part, it's the same water molecules that are cycling around in constant motion. There is a little bit of water that is created and destroyed, for example, in the process of metabolism inside your livestock, but the vast majority of water is the same water molecules moving through the system and around the system. Now with climate change, we've seen some significant changes to the water cycle and its impacts on farm level processes. So as an example, uh, in the interior of BC we're seeing much more variable precipitation. So the volume of water and when that water arrives has been changing. Increased heat stress uh, as increasing the demand for water by crops, by your stock, other farm water uses. Uh, that increased evaporation is also creating uh, episodic drought where they didn't occur before. Changes in the uplands above farming areas, uh, be it from fire, from pest outbreaks such as mountain pine beetle or drought, have a big impact on that upland vegetation and the ability for it to hold water and so that's causing greater inflow so larger freshet flows or other seasonal flood events that are happening and as a consequence also changes in runoff patterns and also partly because of climate change and partly because of management practices we're seeing changes to the soil that cause changes in the infiltration of water into the ground uh, particularly with fire or drought you can actually make the soil less amenable to water entering into the soil profile so you get a greater portion of it flowing over and off So water is integral to sustaining agriculture 
but the needs are really complex and highly variable. They vary seasonally, so your water needs at the beginning of the year are not necessarily the same as during peak crop production. They vary regionally, obviously, because of climatic differences and by sector. So the water needs of a market gardener are not the same as a livestock producer are not the same as an extensive crop producer. And most importantly, water needs and water supplies are impacted by both on and off farm factors. So your inflows and outflows can be influenced strongly by what's happening regionally and uh, also what's going on globally. So these issues and management impacts are governed by scale. So what's going on down at the farm level is strongly influenced by what's happening in the watershed which in turn is strongly influenced by global patterns. So there's strong effects of scale as you move from global down to the farm level. In reverse, changes at the farm that you might implement or experience are really localized to the farm and only become impactful if a lot of farms are experiencing those changes. Then you would see watershed level changes from those. And in turn, a lot of water sheds have to change for there to be global impacts. So we have a lot of options to supplement our water needs in agriculture and uh, I separate them out into what I refer to as hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. So when we refer to hard infrastructure we're really looking at investments in equipment or earthworks that would supplement the system's capacity to capture and store water. So as an example um, we can pump pipe or use ditches to capture more surface water. You can use tunnels, row covers to slow evaporation from the surface. You can pump groundwater to the surface for availability. You can enhance your surface water storage so you have larger reservoirs on farm to do that. You can use dams, berms, or ditches to contain and then you can also just uh, invest in additional equipments that are more efficient in the delivery of that water for irrigation, stock water, or otherwise. Major disadvantage of this, of course, is the cost. Um, taking an infrastructure approach is very expensive. With soft infrastructure, we're looking at changes in management for the most part, but also changes to soil and vegetation through practices such as agroforestry and soil carbon management to conserve water and build the system capacity to trap and hold that water. So with trees, shrubs, organics, uh, we seek to capture more precipitation that's falling, increase the infiltration and slow its diffusion so we're holding that water in the soil root zone as long as possible. With trees and shrubs we have a process uh, known as hydraulic lift where they're able to pull water from deeper soil levels up into the crop rooting zone. We slow and reduce evaporation. Shading to reduce heat stress on your livestock crops and buildings and lower overall demand up. And intercept runoff, uh, particularly with trees and shrubs, also to a lesser extent organics and surface organics is the ability to stop that water from moving out. So what we're really trying to do is slow down that movement of water, build the reservoirs, the natural reservoirs for water in your system. Uh, so that's just a very brief overview of the water cycle and how agriculture is influenced by it and it's sort of a prelude to my next two talks, but uh, be happy to entertain any questions you might have at this time.